and the bank is still owned and run by the, the same families that cre who created and founded the bank uh, in 1796. So the weight of history, the weight of heritage is very, very important in such a bank. Um, it's, it is said, the, 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 the title is Nos 200 premières années, our first 200 years. So it means that we hope we will be able to do 200 more. So what does it mean? And it's, it's at the at the heart of, of the, the uh, governance of this organization. It says, okay, you're uh, working for this organization, you are maybe an owner or maybe a partner, uh, you are an employee, but what you're doing you are doing it for the next generation. Just improve what you have and then pass it to the next generation. That's the way the bank has been managed for more than 200 years. And what do we do? We do, for almost 200 years, always the same thing, we do manage assets that are deposited with us. So I'm sure you think it's boring. Yes. How can you do 200 years the same thing, and especially that kind of thing? So you may be right, but in terms of, of values, uh, you're wrong. But in terms of maybe uh, dynamic, you, 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 you're probably right. So that's the world I entered 25 years ago. That the, was the, the worst place to go to come with new ideas and uh, a dynamic in, in terms of, of innovation. So what I would try to do today is, is maybe to, to show that uh, those two words of, of innovation and tradition can work together. Uh, and maybe with a grade of uh, success. I don't know yet if we will be successful in the future 
by being very innovative, but what would try to do that? So to illustrate that, maybe I, I just go back to our first uh, activities and uh, what we introduced some years ago in this, uh, in this organization. Um, I, I came, uh, I entered the uh, room I did uh, in 87, I was 25, and I presented a business plan, a one-pager business plan, saying, why don't you create a new business line dedicated to independent portfolio managers? Because we had our own portfolio managers working in the bank, serving our own clients, but they were new type of, of, of uh, new business models uh, being created at that time and I thought with my 25 years old that I could bring that to, to nobody and it was a very small entity I and mean, at that time it was called Hanshan Company, uh, 300 employees and um, one of the partners told me why not, let's try it. What is our risk? Maybe in one year you have uh, done nothing and uh, okay, we'll uh, see what you, what you do. But, and they gave, me, they gave me a chance. Even though when I look at the, at the building and the people, I thought I won't be able to, to change anything in this organization. Uh, then the business has been developing quite well for, 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 for the next uh, 10, 15 years. Uh, now I must say that uh, this business is, is representing 20% of the whole assets deposited by private clients in the room of this group. So it has become something quite heavy in our organization business-wise. But in the, in the beginning of the 2000s, uh, I had many of our professional clients, independent of the managers, were seeing the future being, being becoming difficult and they were asking us whether we could find potential partners uh, among our clients. So I was uh, presenting one uh, portfolio manager to another and said, oh, well, I think you have a good uh, fit together and you have the same size. I knew them very well and I did it some, some dozens of times. But it wasn't efficient. So I <coughs> proposed to the partners uh, about this. I'd like to do something, but I need your, your, your approval. Um, I'd like to make the first, um, uh, how do we call it? Uh, no, 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 not social network, but uh, um, speed dating event for <coughs> small entities, not for, for individuals, but for companies. So I organized, I took over the, the whole building and the, all the salons and uh, invited many companies and I said, well, you will have five minutes to present your entity <coughs> to another one you don't know and then the other one will do the same and at the end we'll say, is there any fit or not? And then you go in the, the, the next salon and uh, you do the, the, the same. And, and Patrick would yeah, that you're crazy, it's, we are in bounty, we don't do that kind of thing. Speed dating, you, you know what the speed dating is? I said, Tony, don't, don't, don't say anything to anybody, but just, just do it, because we never know. <laughs> that's that's uh, very important. Uh, and we did it, and people came, and, and they, 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 they had fun, and then they said, okay, I, I, I crossed this guy every day on the street, I didn't know who he was, and finally maybe there, there, there are potentialities. We did it once, twice, and then we had always uh, more people coming to this uh, event. And we realized that the, the time between the two events was too long. So we said, okay, why don't we create something more, uh, I mean, that, that, that can be uh, used every day. And uh, that, that was the time when, when Facebook was, uh, was uh, launched uh, in the beginning of 2006. So we told our clients, the next time we invite you, we will offer you a, an online data site for your entity, for, for your company. You will describe yourself, I mean, describe your company, say everything about your company, and then you will be searchable by others 
who could be interested in cooperating, cooperating with you. Because individually you are you're weak, but globally you, you can be very strong. And what's, we, we gathered all, all those guys in, in, the, in the room, presenting the tool, which was the emerging site that we'll show you in a minute. Uh, they realized that they were all together managing billions of, of, of uh, US dollars together, even though they're individually managing maybe uh, 100, 200, 500. So the, the, what they considered being uh, unchangeable because there were large organizations, large banks, large uh, vertical organizations, and beside that, very small players but weak players, they realized that they could become strong if they were well uh, organized and connected. But this strategy, we could do it with external players, doing, uh, doing that internally, in the old with all the, the weight of history and what I was saying, was much more difficult. So sometimes you have to prove outside what you would like to, to create inside. But then, since those uh, individual players or uh, small entities were our clients, we were offering for free something uh, that could help them uh, to become stronger. And thanks to that, they could consider that Mombardier, which was behind the, this, this uh, support, could be maybe a different banker, a banker who think, uh, I mean, not just looking at assets deposited uh, in the bank and looking at, at uh, easy money, but uh, thinking at, at the, the whole community and uh, how it could be improved in the, in the future. So that was, at the first stage, totally dedicated to independent portfolio managers. And then we realized it was a large community in the world, but too specific. The, the value chain in, in the wealth management is, is much larger. So we opened the, the platform in 2012 to other professionals. So, okay, not only portfolio managers, but lawyers, wealth managers, IT solution providers, HR uh, consultants, and so on. All those guys, being independent, are bringing something in the value chain that is, at the end of the day, serving an end client. So if we organize those players very well, we will be maybe stronger than a large organization that has all the skills internally, but which is too, too, too uh, difficult to, to change and to move. So we open that to those professions, and we uh, marketed the, the platform to non-clients. <coughs> and if you talk with bankers, they, 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 they think in terms of being a client or not. Okay, that, that's the way we, we did money in the past, but maybe is there a money, a, a, a mean to uh, offer a service, bring something to, the, to, to your uh, partnership, to your partner, which is not a client yet, but maybe it would be a client once. So that, the result of that is uh, the emerging platform, which is uh, today um, present in 50 countries, uh, and that gathers uh, more than 1,000 companies and employs more than uh, uh, 1,500 uh, uh, employees and manage altogether 350 billion US dollars. So all those small players, 1,000 companies, they manage 350 billion. So Melanie will show you very rapidly uh, the, what it looks like. Okay, that's a virtual image. It was a. Where is Dara?
about your business model, your clients, uh, and so on. You, you remain anonymous, so you, other members don't know uh, who you are, but they see your profile. And they see as much information as they gave to the platform. But that's the deal. You give, you give information about you, and you get those information from the others. Um, and then, if you are interested in, in profile, you can uh, have uh, access to this member in an anonymous uh, mailbox and you can contact the, the, the member. So you can de decide whether you want to, to work with somebody who's based in, in Zurich, who's managing 200 million, who's, uh, uh, who has been uh, founded more, more than 10 years ago, who has more than 10 employees, <coughs> and who's specialized in, in hedge funds, for instance. This information exists nowhere, because there are many, many uh, uh, databases, but n never th this idea of trans uh, taking those very uh, smart ideas of, of social network uh, um, of it, that have been developed for individuals could be used for a small organization or in a larger organization that was uh, quite innovative at that time. So this community is now a social network and it is organizing events, it is publishing uh, news, it is giving uh, training for the members, it is uh, giving the voice to, to the members and to the, to the, to the partners and there is no real business model. The, the idea is to create an acquisition channel for the bank. And beside that, we have partners who pay something to be visible on the platform. And we pay something like 5,000 Swiss francs a year for, for being uh, on the platform. And there are some, some other type of agreements. But it's our objective is not to make money out of this platform. It's to uh, communicate about technology, communicate about our, our services, and to be a kind of pioneer in this in this uh, community. The 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 other thing we did, which was uh, quite uh, quite uh, disruptive and, and and strange in our world, is that we wanted to organize for our members a yearly event. That's it. We looked at that and so. 51 countries, and, and we have almost no budget for that. How would we be able to, to gather all those members in a place to, to, to uh, have exchange, to exchange with them once a year? So we looked for a software that could help us to recreate the event online without having to uh, invite people from all over the world without having to, to, to pollute the planet, without having to, to, to take a one-week uh, hotel and, 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 uh, and so on. So we found a company called the Hyperfair in San Francisco and they did develop a software that is uh, making able, that able you to, to, to create 3D online events. But they found no finance entity ready to take the risk to do that. They had some, some, some other type of industry saying, oh, well, why don't we do that? But in the, in the States, they find nobody to, to take the risk to, to organize such an event. So we said, Emerging will organize the first 3D online virtual fair um, out of our offices, with Melanie and myself in Geneva, and we invite not only the members, 
but also other uh, uh, finance uh, players to take a booth and to invite the clients and to meet them via their avatars on uh, 3D uh, online event. So we organized the first virtual film fair last year um, and we've had 600 avatars coming one day. They, they spent two and a half hours on average on the platform, coming from 30 countries and walking around, chatting, Skyping, talking together uh, from different places at the same time. Being at the office, on holidays, at home, anywhere. Cost nothing to the, to the avatars, to the visitors, and the, and the, the exhibitors were able to take the booth for almost nothing, was something like 250. Uh, two, I think 2,500 uh, US dollar or euros. Sorry, that, that was the first price for uh, for having goods. But what we did, what was uh, behind the, this uh, this uh, idea, is was also to help uh, exhibitors to digitalize their offer because that was the first step they had to to, to go in order to to enter into this world. So they had one and a half months to create a booth with their uh, marketing materials and then get used to the idea of, of meeting other people via an avatar. And that's what we did. Uh, it, our uh, objective was to have a, a zero cost event that was happened. We, we got some, some, some uh, uh, percentage from the hyperfair for sending for, for selling booths. And with that, it, it paid us the, the, the cost of the software. So it was a zero cost event for us, something that has been, uh, I mean, uh, discussed in the, in the whole major finance spaces, and a very funny event. Because people were writing us during the event. I haven't had such a fun day at the office for years. There were. Uh, they were playing while they were doing business. Uh, and at the same time, they had uh, they forced themselves to digitalize part of their offer. Uh, and of course, you can imagine that some of my partners told me, this is stupid. This is absolutely stupid. You know, we are a people, people business, and uh, we need to, to, to shake hands and uh, have a free engagement. Yes, that's right. But at the same time, most of the editors that came there, maybe they, they wouldn't have come to, 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 to a real event just because it was too far, too expensive, too something. So uh, this is something that comes in, that is additional to it, what exists. Maybe can simplify our life in some cases. That's not that expensive and that which is fun and you know people were chatting having four chats to, uh, at the same time and they were having fun uh, so now we are uh, repeating the, uh, the, the concept on the 24 25th of uh, september uh, having one day for the b2b uh, players and the, the second day for the it's, will be a b2b to c uh, event and we hope we can uh, double the number of exhibitors and uh, the number of uh, visitors. And if you are interested in being a visitor, uh, you can go on the site and then sign in. And we will then visit the place with an avatar. You can dress up your avatar, and that's very, that's very fun. OK, uh, the reason why I, I, I'm, I'm talking about that, it's not that uh, I want absolutely to have to many, many visitors, but it's to show you that uh, if you're convinced of something, if you're uh, also credible because you, you, you are having, uh, let's say you, you have shown that doing your business, you, you are able to, to, to do something real, then you're, uh, you can dream. And you can share your dreams even with a very traditional organization. Because this traditional organization has something that 
others have not. They, they have clients and they have a, a, a credibility uh, and if you can build up something on it, shaking the, the, the heads in, internally, and that, that uh, takes a lot of energy, I admit. But once you can do it, you can maybe one day take the whole organization into this new, this new world, which is much, much funnier than it used to be in the, in the finance world. So uh, the question is, is, is the cocktail uh, tradition and, and innovation um, compatible or possible? I think, yes, in, in certain conditions. You must have a, a very uh, open-minded uh, management and um, you must benefit from the trust of, of, of your peers. That's, and to get it, maybe you have to, to prove at the first stage that with the traditional way, you can succeed. And then you, 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 you can uh, open up to other um, uh, facilities. I just wanted to, because I, I was re reading the, the, the part of the book the other day, and uh, I read just that about Jean Eloi Lombard, born uh, 1801 uh, in 1872. And it is said, uh, like, uh, I try to translate, uh, Jean, uh, interested in, in new inventions, Jean Eloi Lombard. Um, introduced the telegraph in Switzerland and opened, that was in, in 1830 uh, or something like that, and opened in Geneva a subscription uh, in order to, to finance the, 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 the infrastructure for that. And it says that uh, the subscription was, wasn't a, su a success at all because people in Geneva were, were, were quite close to those new technologies. So, <laughs> Well, it means, it means that it was very interesting in new technologies. Maybe it wasn't well heard in, in his world, but the bank still exists, and the spirit of innovation still exists, even though looking at it from outside look, looks very traditional and, and sometimes very close to, to new, uh, new things and new technologies. So, uh, thank you for your attention. I'm ready to answer your questions. Uh, and uh, I thank you for your Because uh, people are signing in uh, in Australia or in, uh, in South Africa and, and, and Dubai and, so, and we never travel there. Uh, but uh, suddenly they are in, in our environment and uh, they don't need to be a uh, to, to, to client, it's free, uh, but uh, they, it becomes much, much more easy to, to, to get in contact with them. So it works. But it took, uh, I mean, in the beginning it was quite, quite difficult, but it's now a five years uh, story. Uh, thank you for that. Um, you speak very easily about how changing the traditional structure by bringing in these ideas. And I salute you for a 25 years old company with one page business plan. Mm -hmm. um, but I was wondering, can you give us an example of some resistance you may have felt from a traditional structure? Um, of you know, your many years of proposing new ideas and succeeding at proposing new ideas? Oh, I can uh, share with you the, the, my, my present, uh, resi the present resistance I'm uh, facing uh, with the idea of, of transferring into the, the, the organization the whole idea of, of uh, social networking the, the whole bank. Because I think uh, tomorrow, there is no chance for any uh, type of organization, especially like uh, us, to, 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 to uh, work without being 
the social network at, 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 as such for, for, for its own community of client employees and and, 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 and uh, contributors and and, and, uh, and partners. So uh, for me, it's it's so obvious that we have to to transfer all this community that is already existing, which is not connected, uh, into this world. So I go to and I say, why don't we do that? Because now we have a five years experience of doing it externally, and now there are some new technologies, and we want to uh, take another one's social network to adapt it to, to ourselves because we want to, to put our own rules in it. But if we do that, it will become our world, will become our entity, it will maybe and take all the, the value of our organization. And we'll be able to, to, to communicate on this uh, environment with our client, with our public. And, and to answer your question, you know, in our organization, part of the, of, the, of the relationship between us and the clients, right, not part, all the, the, the relationship is managed by a small number of, of, of people. Okay. Let's say we have 30,000 clients, maybe we have 300 portfolio managers, relationship managers, and then 2,000 employees. It's just impossible. It, maybe it used to be feasible 15 years ago. Today, we have to open that, so we do have to share the relationship with others. The client must be able to go directly to the, to the, to the real specialist level. <coughs> without having to, to, to go through this channel. So most of our organizations are, 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 are designed on, on, on this model today. So, but we can change it in, in, in a year. It's, it's not that, that difficult. But <laughs> mentalities and, and this, this is difficult. So people are resisting because they don't want to, to share their power, they share their, 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 their position. Uh, with a larger community, maybe. Do, do you really think that the client will take its own decision? Will have be able to to, to, to determine what was good for him or not? But yes. So our role is more to become more uh, community managers, helping the clients to find a good solution, maybe by himself, but giving him the tools to do so and choosing, maybe pre-choosing. The, 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 the good partners we need, internal, external, we don't care. It has a, and then we'll charge maybe something for, for offering that. Instead of doing the job ourselves. Yes? Uh, I might my name is Jan. Um, first of all, I'm really grateful for hearing you or Banco use the same vocabulary we used to uh, try to um, uh, people understand like 15 years ago as hardcore online gamers, so it's pretty interesting. Um, you use a lot the word avatars and interactions. Uh, as Eve stated on Twitter, it's, it looks like um, second life for financial experts. Absolutely. Um, it's pretty interesting to see how things evolve. Now I can say my mom, even bankers are using those. You know, so it's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, um, that's what you said, even bankers. <laughs> My question would be on the open description you uh, you did at first. Uh, what are you trying to use it for? Um, I think uh, um, when I saw that uh, in, the, in, the, in the newspaper and so on, right before it uh, has been sold to uh, Facebook, it has been financed by by. by Okay, and uh, I saw that and uh, I said to Nani, okay, please buy me one and I want to, to see that immediately. <laughs> uh, and we um, weren't able to find one because uh, at uh, Oculus Rift they were uh, writing the contracts with uh, Facebook and they didn't care about uh, the clients. <laughs> okay, so finally it's a second hand uh, prototype we found in France and uh, okay, 200 uh, euros. Uh, so, and, and and before we saw it uh, in real, we knew that maybe it could be the, 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 the link between social networks, 
and the real life. That's what I think. Uh, and I think Facebook has realized that in, in the sense that otherwise they, they will have more such, such, a, such a device which is, uh, they don't want to, 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 to create uh, new games and I don't think so, maybe yes, but so, and anyway, if, we, if they don't want and they, we would like tomorrow to give the possibility to a member by sending him a, such a device and say, okay, why don't you enter into our community in almost in reality, virtual reality, and why don't we have a meeting together with that? Because now we have some, some conference rooms in the bank where you can almost, you feel like uh, having a meeting with somebody who's in the room. But I mean, it takes a room like that plus uh, 200,000 uh, uh, Swiss francs and then you have to reserve the, 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 the room. But that's, okay, that's good, but uh, is that? You could, you could be everywhere working, having fun, playing, uh, and, and that's that's big, of course. But tomorrow it could be maybe your your glasses or um, becomes uh, black, and uh, so it opens so many doors. That I I want to work that way, and I want to be uh, meet people in real for the pleasure. So I think so. We say to uh, Hyperfair, please uh, connect the software with that, and I said, no, we have it's, it's too much. It's too much. Uh, but we are insisting and, and hopefully uh, we will uh, make the, the connect the two chains. What do you think if I can add something? They're, they're also very innovative in their office. Because uh, last time uh, I visited you, uh, you had an ostrich pillow. And a uh, <laughs> And a bag. Uh, and actually, we have the pleasure to have the founder of the ostrich pillow here in the room today. It's uh, Ken Gormer. Uh, I think he had a question, right? Yes, thank you very much. Thanks for being here as well. I'm going to make pictures with myself. <laughs> so thanks a lot for this very refreshing view on, on banking. Uh, I have a question. Um, my, in the world of lean startups, which is the world I, I belong to, typically when you introduce a disruptive innovation, you try to do it first internally, then with a very selected group of uh, external partners or potential users, yeah. and then eventually you scale it up and you break it up. It's a way of risk managing. If I understand correctly, when you came with this disruptive ideas to your partners, they said, first test it out, and then we try it in, and which I, to, me, to me it sounds like a, a lot of risk, especially reputational risk. Right. I don't know if you Talk a little bit about this experience. Yes. Um, no, they, they, it's not wasn't their their advice to uh, try it uh, outside uh, first. Uh, it was just because it was my my world. Those external uh, players. So and that's where I thought I, I could try the concept. And more than that. That's where the need was, because I, I just uh, come in the morning and uh, say uh, I do that. It's just because I was I have I have clients who were looking for something. They didn't know how to solve the, the problem, and uh, but they, they were having the problem. So that in, that in this case the risk was small because it was just putting something in front, in front of, of, of the need. So I told the partners, I'm doing some, I just need some, some money to, to do something uh, and, and uh, using our IT forces to answer the question of my clients. And we are starting very small. So the, the low risk was uh, uh, reached by offering a service to a small number of, of people who were needing it. And it was Thanks to their um, <coughs> satisfaction, that we, we could uh, open up uh, to, to others. Uh, so it wasn't really a strategy; it was just uh, the, the result of the reality. Yeah. Uh, if you do get the sign up from your management for an enterprise social network, internet, 
Um, do you use an existing solution like Yammer or Bitrix 3.4 or would you only develop something internal? Uh, the second uh, possibility, for sure. You wouldn't accept to use an external solution? No. no. Because um, that's, that's the, the way I can ensure the whole community that we will determine the rules. <coughs> And there are many rules in our world. I mean, in terms of, of, of uh, um, privacy and, 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 and so and so, there are so many fears about what social networks, the, 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 the hidden agenda of, of, of social networks, and, and so on. So that's why when you're talking about that, in the company, it's Google, Google, okay, but we have employees in our organization who are using Yammer. Why do, do, do they do that? Because it doesn't exist internally. But they are giving information to others. It's, 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 it's unacceptable, to my opinion. So I think we have to place our work under our rules. We will say who's in, who can get in, who can get out. I don't know can, everybody can get out, but uh, who can get in, who are the, 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 what are the rules. And, and then, every time we say, oh, we must be careful about that, we uh, determine what, what has to, to be done. Um, and by chance, we have an existing social network that we can copy uh, into just changing uh, the, 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 the design and, 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 and uh, some fun functionalities. But basically, we are uh, offering this same service for external than for internal. But we just have we have to add the end client being part of the of the community without needing to be a client. That's also the point. Because our tourist client will be first a member of the community and then possibly a client. Yes. And Eve, what's your rule in terms of user data privacy? <laughs> okay, what's my rule? You, you said that uh, you have uh, very important rules to protect the confidentiality, secrecy, yes. privacy. Yes. Uh, I was curious to know uh, in the banking world what's, what uh, rules you put for your platform to protect the data of your users. Okay. Um, very simple answer. Uh, we have uh, exactly the same rules as we have in, in the bank for our own clients. So, so the, 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 the processes are the same, and the, and the, the IT uh, security specialists are, are having the same standard of security. But that's why also it has been quite helpful to be in Bombardier to, to, to promote this network, because we were known for being pretty good in, in keeping information for our clients. So that was quite a, also an important element that shows that it's not bad to, to, to build up based on you know, the existing credibility. <coughs> yes. My question is actually bouncing on that. Uh, it was about, could you tell us a little bit more about your marketing plan, how you did your promotion at the time that the Emerging was a, a brand new product? Did you use more traditional ways or innovative ones? Um, yes, the first year, uh, or maybe the first two years, we the nine and ten, uh, let's say that we use traditional means uh, by, by um, doing some road shows. Uh, we were inviting our clients in the different places where we have a uh, desk. So we were meeting real people, showing the, the, the platform. That's what we did the, uh, the first uh, two years. And then, uh, one year, we decided, uh, uh, with Melanie, to um, uh, shift the whole uh, budget from, from traditional marketing to online marketing, at least for one year. Just to force us to understand how it works and to understand how we could use it. And uh, then uh, <laughs> we're all used to, to traditional needs. And so that year was quite uh, interesting. Uh, and then we came back to more, uh, to more uh, mix strategy of uh, traditional links and online links, but it's half-half, of course. Do you use Yammer for 
you acquire clients using the online channel, like normal clients or wealth management? Uh, not yet. Uh, but what we want, we would like to do is uh, to do the same thing as we were doing this about a year ago. We will offer it to the members. We say, okay, we will give you a, a small emerging uh, white label uh, social network for creating your own community uh, with your end client. So this is the same approach, same theory. And, uh, and that will take time because uh, you know the, the, those small entities until they, they understand and uh, see the same yes. It's, it's a little bit of work to uh, to to convince people to, to change the way the you may you know you say see how you say I don't know to, the, the, the database of clients potential clients. That's the way uh, most of the people who are still in the driving seat understand the way they, 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 they manage the clients. They, they don't see the interest of, of, of so, so, uh, social networks. And most of them, uh, at least in, uh, in, 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 in Europe, at least in Europe, because in other countries where the, 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 the average uh, age of the population is uh, 35, it's different by chance. Sorry guys, we're a bit late. Maybe just one more question. Wait, yes. Hello, my name is Thomas. Um, I think you, you did a great job on B2B and B2B2C, as you said. Do you have any plans with regards to more C2B, like a fair where you have small businesses or startups looking for investors and things like that? Yes. So that's already included? or No, it is not. Okay. It's on the, on the to-do list. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nice page with uh, 200. Uh, no, sorry. Yeah. There's on down there to do. So, the maximum we can do right now is what you have on the banner where you can simulate your business plan, right? No, no, no. That's no, no, absolutely not. There, are, there is, a, a, for instance, there is a, a shop, an e shop, where you can buy um, you can buy services offered by the, the, the partners. So, you can online shop. You can train yourself. You can do some 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 training, uh, online training. Uh, you can. Uh, um, okay, this is uh, this is something interesting. This is a, a, a business plan simulator. So you are not independent. You are a portfolio manager. You are working in a bank. So why not uh, you become independent? Okay, but you have no idea for what because how it could uh, develop. So in five, fifteen minutes, you can just enter. Uh, Information about your your clients and your what you're looking for, and then it gives you a five years business plan online without having to give your your name. And then it says maybe you want to become independent, you want me to meet somebody who knows about it. Sorry, I didn't want to ask yeah, questions. I think maybe you catch up with us. Okay, okay. Monsieur, um, during the coffee, because we still have some content, and some things to eat. You're so hungry, so you are very welcome to stay a bit more and talk and exchange and so on. And I guess you will be available for a couple of minutes more. Absolutely. Perfect. Great. Thank so, you very much